Hello and welcome to Australia in Space TV. Uh, we're joined here by Dr. Sarah Kennard, a SmartSat CRC's Industry Director from Adelaide, and Patrick Stewart, Satellite Applications Catapult's Business and Market Modelling Lead, uh, normally based in the UK, but you're visiting here in Australia and based in Melbourne uh, today. Patrick and Sarah, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Now, we're going to be talking about the UK Space Satellite uh, Catapult's uh, capability uh, catalogue uh, or capabilities. Uh, very interesting platform that we've built here. Sarah, maybe about the background, and this very much uh, relates to the UK Space Bridge uh, celebrating its uh, second year. Yeah, that's right. So um, by way of background, this really, this relationship, I suppose, started about two years ago with the Space Bridge. And um, we joined forces with the Space Applications Catapult um, and some of our other UK counterparts. And, and we started, I guess, um, with some projects. So we started with funding five projects and that built the relationship through to what we're working on today, which is this um, supply chain catalogue. So it's it's been a, a, um, a long, not long, it's been a two year <laughs> relationship, which is really sort of built and, um, and the pinnacle of, what we've developed with this database is really, um, it's quite its quite exciting. Absolutely, and I'll come back to the SmartSat CRC and whether this relates back to any research project, but Patrick, you've uh, effectively built this platform. Uh, maybe talk us through the process and some of the visualizations that uh, it's generating. Sure, thank you. So the, um, the capabilities catalog goes through a number of different sort of stages. Um, the first of which is to sort of define the market and the subsector we're looking at in this instance it's space and Australia. So how does the Australian Space Agency, Australian Government and SmartSat CRC kind of define space and what are the organisations that meet that definition? Then we move into the identify stage. So identifying those organisations where SmartSat CRC and the team have been pivotable in, in, in kind of helping us to identify and validate the organizations working in the Australian space ecosystem. And then we go through to, to gather and, and analyze. So we're gathering the data we need to kind of start deriving insights on the Australian space ecosystem. And we're analyzing it. We're using Power BI, which is a Microsoft tool, which most businesses have access to, and you can publish it for free online as a live platform. Um, and that's how we're sort of presenting this information as a comparison between both Australia and the UK in order to help us to identify new opportunities. Well, look, visually, uh, it's impressive, and I appreciate you've categorised it so that we're talking about the value chain. I've got it open in front of me here, and then where they sort of fit, whether they're upstream, downstream, uh, and the like. Is that potentially something you're going to expand on, or is this quite fixed? No, so the taxonomy, e.g. the defining key words we use to categorize each of these businesses, very much a bamboo process. And we know it's always going to be a work in process to kind of make sure that we are identifying this kind of systems that are needed to categorize businesses. Um, as a start of a 10, we've got some 230-ish different taxonomy levels. So we're quite granular in that regard. Um, and yeah, we've, we split it into various activities from upstream, e.g. the production of launch capability, launch services, the bus and payload, and getting that into space, down to how we can use that data through downstream applications and other services. Um, so it's going to be an evolving process. And the more businesses get involved with the, with the activity itself means the more clear and the more granular we can be with how we're categorizing and identify Australian and UK businesses in this, this system and supply chain. Um, Sarah, I suppose from uh, Australia's perspective, this probably hasn't been done before. There's about 200 plus companies currently in there, as I understand it. Uh, it it's certainly a good one from a visualisation and looking at the Australian space industry to go, you know, uh, are we sort of stronger on ancillary services or applications, manufacturing? So it breaks it down. Any surprises there for you? And how would you sort of describe the industry when you see it like this? Yeah, for sure. Uh, there were a few surprises. So part of the initial activity is that we pulled together information from a whole bunch of other databases. So this sort of thing hasn't been done before. You're right there with regards to it being publicly available and on such a powerful platform. But what we found is internally to a lot of businesses, SmartSat included, um, you know, the likes of the space industry type associations, state governments, large organisations, we all have our own internal databases. And so yeah. what one of the, the activities that we did is we reached out to a lot of those stakeholders and they were very willing to help 
pull that data in. And so the initial, I guess, background list um, of organisations was in excess of 600 across Australia. Um, but many of those were, uh, let's say, tenuous links to, um, to space. Um, and so one of the activities that we did was uh, uh, had a look at each of those organisations um, and made a judgment as to whether or not they were really truly involved in the space sector or whether they had future desires to potentially pivot into that area, et cetera. And we had some criteria around that. So of that of that 600, um, I think, and Patrick, you might be able to correct me if I'm wrong, because we've been updating the numbers on an ongoing basis. So I think there's four to 500 who are actually within the categories of being classed as working in the space ecosystem. So that was um, quite a surprise. Um, I've done a lot of work in the last 15 years of my life has really been defence and space. So um, I thought I knew quite a lot of them, um, but in actual fact, we're really scraping the surface. And what was really excellent for, for me, at least, is seeing all of the upcoming new organisations that are just really um, accelerating the space ecosystem across Australia. So lots of startups and lots of um, lots of new capabilities coming into, into the ecosystem. And, and I think I heard a quote once, there's one new space startup in Australia per week, um, you know, right. is really kind of what we're dealing with. So to see that level of growth and now being able to track it because we've got this system and, and the powerful metrics behind it um, is really quite exciting. So there were some surprises there with regards to how much we're really actually doing. Uh, Patrick, in the initial release, it was catalogued uh, 240 Australian organisations. Is it up around four or 500 now? Uh, is that where it's at? So we're hoping by the, the so we're doing a launch event um, at Avalon on the UK Pavilion on Wednesday the first, and we're at, at that time we're hoping to have about 300, 350 organisations. Um, right. By the end of the financial year, by the end of March, uh, we'll hopefully have about 400, 500 organisations, which is at that point kind of the grand sum of um, yeah. organisations that we've been able to identify working in the Australian space ecosystem. I think the important thing, being what Sarah said, is that a lot of organisations need to be able to classify their work in the space sector, in both across Australia and the UK. Um, yeah. A lot of organisations, be it the UK Space Agency, Australian Space Agency, um, consultants, etc., use web scraping as a function to identify businesses working in the space sector. And if a business never says once on any of their media outreach that we work in space or any of those keywords, it's really hard to identify them. So although we've yeah. been able to kind of take that list of 650, 700 down to about 400, 500, we could be missing, you know, tens or hundreds of organizations who just don't promote it themselves. So I think, yeah, by the time we launch in Avalon, yeah. we'll have about 400, 450 maybe, uh, uh, businesses by the end of the year and 300 by March. Um, but businesses need to be out there actively drumming the beat for space. It's a growing sector. And it's a collaborative industry, and we need to be helping them to identify where they're sitting in that market. Very good. How, how granular can you drill down? So once you've identified the company, naturally, I imagine, is there any other metrics uh, within this potentially to give us uh, sort of an economic value, for example? So on, on the first part on how granular it can be, we've, we've got activity category system one and system two so we can go from launch to launch services within launch services we can have test and integration um so it, it can go right down to to basically component factors in those those granular systems um in terms of economic data that's something that um the catapult uk space agency australian space agency and smart sat are going to be talking about at avalon um, about how much more information we can integrate into this we we found as part of the initial uh, activity that we kicked off uh, last year, that getting access to economic data within Australia is is one of those sort of challenges that we will we will need support with from you uh, from Australian government. So we're hoping that in the next iteration of this work to be able to get more access to that turnover, employee numbers, balance sheet statements, yeah. etc., in order for us to start to generate that economic level of analysis across the Australian space ecosystem. On the UK side. We've been able to get access to that data through Companies House, and there's obviously a similar version of that in Australia, but we have to pay to get access to that. And at the moment, it's just something that wasn't part of the initial scope and we're looking at. Um, Sarah, yeah, just what, what's your thoughts on the economics uh, sort of measurements uh, and what metrics we can start to, to gain from this to feed back into the industry? Yeah, definitely. I think at, th at this point in time, the way the tool is structured and this initial initial stage, we can't start to um, provide that information. But like Patrick said, gathering that 
and and using that historically is really important. One of one of the challenges that we have is, although for you know at least publicly you know listed registered companies, we could go in and have a look at their balance sheets and and make some assumptions there. That's quite a lot of work for six hundred companies. But what isn't clear is some of the larger organisations where they might be doing a lot of work in defence, maybe a lot of work in utilities, and some work in space. It's very hard to break out. What is their space aspect of that? What's their turnover for their space business? What is their uh, profit and loss for that, that space portion of the business? And one of the things that we found is that in Australia, our reporting requirements for those financials and that econometric um, data is different to the UK. So it's not impossible um, to do, um, but we are investigating what that's going to look like. But that's something that I I think from a strategic point of view, so um, government level, state governments, um, Australian Space Agency, having an understanding of a, a more accurate identification of where we are now within the economy, what's our turnover, um, and tracking that through the, the future um, going forwards. It might be hard to do, do it backwards, but going forwards, I think it's going to be a very powerful way to understand whether or not the initiatives that we're um, implementing, you know, the research that SmartSat are doing, the national missions out of the space agency, private um, missions, et cetera, how is that impacting the economy as a whole? Yeah. I think it's very important given space often uh, espouses, you know, to 10 times multiplier, you know, in terms of that initial investment. Yeah. This is an opportunity at least to show that, right, over time uh, and map it. There's uh, some of the breakdowns on the legacy breakdown of the of the sector in terms of build, downlink, explore, launch, in terms of where they sit. Any particular patterns that you see there, Sarah, for Australia, our strengths uh, or where we weigh heavy? Yeah, so we, we've got a lot of strength in our, um, I guess, our research um, sector, but that is very much with often within the universities. So we're, we've got some world-leading research there. I think one of the trends that we're seeing um, that Australia are really good at is uh, remote operations and um, IoT, so um, Internet of Things, and that that connectivity. You know, the, the tyranny of distance is that we have had to come up with um, initiatives and um, systems and technologies to be able to do operations in very remote areas. So those sorts of things, you know, are very prominent. Um, we're also very excellent on dealing with with data. We've got some excellent um, data analytics. Um, organisations across Australia, uh, robotics as well. Um, that's really starting. I think pr probably what I'm one of the trends that, um, at least personally, I think I'm seeing is that robotics um, aspect of uh, of what Australia can offer is really starting to pivot into space. And that's everything from advanced manufacturing using robotics through to um, ro robotic arms, rovers, uh, manipulating air uh, spacecraft in space on orbit and those sorts of things. So I think that's an area to watch and see grow. Um, but that's that's a very subjective view without having the, the year by year um, uh, assessment of how that's growing, um, time will tell. Fair enough. And I suppose, um, Patrick, how do you see this expanding? We were just in Singapore last week. Uh, so the new agreements with Singapore and, and the UK in that regard, is this something you will continue to build uh, through your partner or your key stakeholder partners? Yes, yeah, so in, in terms of potentially onboarding other nations, um, we, we're currently having those conversations with our Department of Business and, and Trade, um, formerly Department of International Trade, and our Foreign Commerce Development Office uh, to see where the UK's priorities overseas lie and how we can use our methodologies as we have uh, have, as we demonstrate with Australia, to map other countries such as Japan, South Africa, Australia, uh, continuing Australia, Canada, um, uh, India, etc. Um, but I, I'll also just just add that the, the good news about um, sort of economic data, etc., is, is it's historic. Once it's in, luckily you might never have to touch it again. It's it, it's, it's doing that initial gathering exercise. So we there's a number of ways that we could help take this to the next step in Australia. And in doing that, help demonstrate our methodologies that we've developed in the UK and here in Australia to apply to other nations as well. Well, look, I think it's a very good visualisation of the UK Space Bridge. Uh, we mentioned it's a, a two-year thing. Sarah, um, any any sort of takeaways from the initial two years or 
potentially we could finish up with the roadmap for the next sort of two years. <laughs> but uh, how involved have you been over the last couple of years with the UK Space Bridge and, and the benefits it's bringing? Yeah, yeah. So I think at SmartSat CRC, we're really um, proud to be leveraging that um, that Space Bridge initiative. And that's really opened up a lot of doors to be able to have the conversations. And, and I sometimes I think people don't put enough weight and leverage around um, how a conversation can lead to something. Um, and so the last two years, um, SmartSat and Catapult um, have been very sort of closely aligned, working together, investing time, funding, cash, um, you know, bringing on interns really actively in that space. So um, that's been, that's been great. Um, but I also do feel that we're, we've just sort of started to scrape the surface. So some of the initiatives that, um, that Patrick spoke about with expanding the international database um, potentially to beyond just the supply chain, you know, we're in those discussions and, and those sorts of tools could be really powerful going forward. So in terms of what the next two years brings, I'm, I'm hoping it's the next 20 years. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's, a, you know, it, it is a growing, growing relationship. And, um, you know, been I think I've known Patrick for two years and next week we'll get to meet in person, which is great. So, right. um, yeah, really looking forward to growing um, and deepening the relationship, not just with um, Space Applications Catapult, but others in the UK um, and understanding how we can really benefit that cross um, that. Uh, sector collaboration yeah well while we while we've got you patrick maybe what's a little bit more about catapult what is exactly that you do and the size of the company because again uh, crossed them last week in in singapore yeah okay so the satellite applications catapult was set up in 2013 and much like smart sat crc we're here to help grow our respective space sector and um, we have a mandate from uk government to, to help the uk space sector to grow to be about a roughly 10 percent global market share by 2030 um, and we do that through a number of ways, including sort of business interventions, facilities, um, helping to develop international relations, such as so we have done with SmartSat CRC over the last couple of years. Um, you know, there's a whole pillar, a whole pillar around the UK national space strategy around international collaboration. So we're helping to really drive that home. Um, in terms of size, we've got about 200 uh, individuals working at the Satellite Applications Catapult. Um, about 60% of them are technical and the rest are, are non-technical. Um, and we're, we're, we're continuously growing year on year to help that remit of growing the UK space sector. Great. Well, I had the pleasure of speaking to uh, Harshbin Sanger, the Director of Growth with the UK Space Agency, uh, just recently. So that video is up uh, and again, giving a good overview of the, of the UK space sector and the outreach uh, and I suppose those partnerships that the UK mm -hmm. is, is forging. It's great to have you in Melbourne. Uh, we'll see you next week. It's, it's Friday, so just a few days to go before Avalon Air Show. And uh, Sarah, great to see you. And we'll see you in person there uh, as well. Um, look, thank you. Is, uh, just a quick question. Is there media involved on this? Are we listed on there at all? I don't think <laughs> Are we a down streamer? Yeah. That's it. It's a great it's a great question and actually the, some of the conversations i've been having recently since this has sort of been announced that we're launching at avalon are how, how do we get stem on there how do we get media on there how do we get mm -hmm. you know those sorts of things you know yeah. on there and people are really start really invested in it and um they really want to see the true representation i mean space law space economics, space yeah. media, space art, you know, it, it all helps to grow and promote the ecosystem. So there's certainly a lot of interest for people going, where's where's my taxonomy? <laughs> and so and I think that's something to discuss going forwards. You'll be glad to know media and outreach are one of the subsystems in our taxonomy. So hopefully uh, no. you'll be in there at some point in the near future. But we'll just make, make sure you fill in the online form for us. <laughs> So I suppose that's it. We'll have the link in the show notes as well. Otherwise, we'll see you next week at Stand 1G34 at Hall 1. Uh, it's going to be launched on Wednesday, the 1st of March uh, in the morning. Uh, we'll be there to cover it. We'll try to get this interview out well before then as well from the audience perspective. And otherwise, uh, we'll have the link. But uh, visit SmartSat, CRC uh, and uh, Catapult as well. Pretty easy to find. So yeah. look, thank you so much, Patrick Stewart. Uh, you are the Satellite Applications Catapult's Business and Market Modelling Lead uh, and Dr. Sarah Cannard, uh, SmartSat CRC Industry Director. Thanks so much for joining us today on Australia in Space TV. Pleasure, Chris.